Today we're going to talk about light and how artists use light in their work. And since light is required for us to see or have vision, by definition, visual art can't exist without light. First, let's learn a little bit about how light works. The opacity of an object is the amount of light passing through the object. To demonstrate this, we're going to look at three shapes and how different levels of opacity affect which of the shapes we can see. For example, if the red shape is opaque, this means that light is not able to pass through the shape. Therefore, light reflects off the red shape and back to the viewer's eye. The viewer is unable to see the blue or the green shape behind the red shape. The next level of opacity is called translucent. This means that some light can pass through the shape. The light shining on the translucent red shape passes through the red shape, reflects off the blue opaque shape, and back to the viewer's eye. The viewer sees the blue shape through the red shape, but cannot see the green shape behind the blue shape. The least level of opacity is called clear. This means that no light is reflected, and all light simply passes through the object. Clear objects have no color, not even white. They are simply the color of air. In this case, light passes through the clear object, then through the blue translucent object, and finally reflects off the green opaque object back to the eye. The viewer sees the blue translucent object, sees the green opaque object through the blue to object, but cannot see the clear object because there is no color to be seen. Glass is a clear material that artists often use. Let's visit artist Amber DeBurke and see how she uses glass. Typically in the mornings when I come to the studio, I'll come and find little special deliveries from various people. They'll come and drop off boxes of bottles for me. I use them in all my creations. The reason why I choose to work with recycled glass goes back to the late 90s. I actually was the director of the Recycling Coalition of Utah, which was a statewide nonprofit that provided recycling education in the school systems. So this is the technique I'm going to show you. These products right here are a type of enamel or paint that is used with different types of glass and it fires beautifully. So if you like to paint, this is a fun product to work with. So what we're going to do is we're going to take just one of these pieces of glass and start just lifting this up and as you can see it starts creating the little vein like structures that are like that piece. I, it makes, reminds me of a very organic piece, like we're in nature. So I like that, but I want to cover up that with, with paint. So I'll continue to press down and pull up until I get a fun design that I like. And then I'll, I'll leave it like that. And then what I'll do is I'll continue to decorate that piece of glass until I have the whole base filled after I have this all covered in the bottom, I'll layer pieces on this and then I would fire it. Now some of the squares of the glass, um, I haven't even done anything with. So if you can look closely, I don't know if you can see through there, that you'll see all of these ones that I have designs on, but I also just put squares of glass on top of the bottom painted just to create another window, kind of a viewing section of that, just to create a different effect. And it's really quite beautiful what that does with a with all of the paint and the different things that we've done. I did the same thing here. I did a piece that I painted on and then I put another piece of clear just on top in that corner. So that's the process for making this piece and after we do that we go and put it in the kiln right over here and it's in there ready to go. I like to fill up my kiln before I fire it. It takes probably about eight to ten hours to fire this piece and to cool it down another four to five hours to cool down to room temperature. That about wraps up our time for today, but I have a project waiting for you at www.incredibleartfactory.com. In today's project, we're going to be making plastic flowers, and we're also going to be using the scientific method to determine the opacity and durability of different art materials. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay incredible.